Well, welcome back, homesteaders. This is Jay with Colony Hills Homestead coming back at you. So this evening, I'm getting ready to do some work. Um, looks like I've, I'm going to be planting my yellow summer squash, my zucchini this evening. So I've went ahead in advance three or four weeks ago in the greenhouse, had my seeds started. Um, they're up now. Um, they're ready to be planted. Uh, my garden's already tilled, fertilized, composted. It's ready. I've got my tomatoes out, my cucumber, some other things. But I want to take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about squash because at least here in the south, squash are easily grown and grown in abundance. And a lot of times you, you overplant, you'll have too much. That's great. Share with your neighbors, share with your friends, bring it to the farmer's market. There's always uh, plenty of people willing to, to get that product from you because, hey, it tastes so good. Um, so there's a lot of different varieties of squash that you can plant. Um, and I want to talk about a few today. So the summer squash, um, that I plant is a prolific straight neck squash. And I do plant a, a crook neck squash. Zucchini, I plant a dark green beauty, I believe is what it's called. Love zucchini. And I plant what's called a hybrid 49er. That is a very tasty zucchini. I thought when I bought it and planted it that it was a squ summer squash, a yellow squash, because it is a yellow-skinned zucchini. If you like zucchini, check out Hybrid 49er. They're great, and it's not too late to go get a packet of them and get them planted right now because they say germination takes about, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 days where we live here in the south, maybe it's a humidity, maybe it's a rain, maybe it's a great soil, I don't know. But I've never had any of my squash seeds take more than five or six days to come up, um, which, is, which is great. So I'll say this. You'll read online that the preferred method of planting squash is directly in your garden, your seeds. Plant them about an inch deep, okay? Um, water them in and they'll come up and they'll do fine. Make sure you plant them after your first frost. Um, I plant all my garden vegetables come from seeds and I'm lucky enough to have greenhouses, um, solar lights, all this. So um, I, I can get mine up and get a three to four week head start on everybody. But with squash, you have to be careful. It's not like tomatoes, seeds and peppers and all this other. Squash have a root system that is um, spreads out and it's real close to the top of the ground. So that being said, they're not going to be easily planted in these small little four packs that you see a lot of other things planted in. Probably a four inch uh, planter. Some people even do it in a six inch planter would probably be best. And a lot of plants, um, I deal with succulents and as you can see some here, um, I deal with all that. When you're replanting something, you want to agitate the roots, maybe even trim the roots some. Um, but when with squash, they don't like the roots messed with. So number one, you don't want to leave them in those containers too long to be root bound. Because when you have them root bound, you'll plant them in your garden and you'll have a little plant like this trying to bloom. And you're wondering, oh, I don't know why I don't have any squash. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You left it in your container too long and it's trying to think that that's its mature size and as big as it's going to grow because of the container you had it in and now it's going to bloom one bloom and it ain't going to do anything because that plant wouldn't support a fruit so you got to get them on out early and i, I would even suggest you know uh th it's preferred methods to plant them straight in your garden okay um, but you'll find them at your big box stores and you just heard it from me that I, I do get an early start on squash. I get an early start on all my vegetables. Um, so let's talk about summer squash, winter squash, and zucchini. So as I said, I'm going to be doing a prolific straight neck and a crook neck yellow squash. I'm going to be doing two different, actually I'm doing three different type of zucchinis. I'm doing a new one this year, which is a gray zucchini. Um, it looks like a small watermelon, but I'm always wanting to try something new in this area because we just love squash here. Um, but let's talk about winter squash versus all those. Don't be confused by the name winter squash. Winter squash does not mean plant that squash in the winter. Hey, years ago I thought the same thing. 
what that means is those squash can be planted in the summer, late spring, summer, harvested, and those type of squash are categorized as a hard squash. They have a harder um, um, exterior. We're talking, let's talk spaghetti squash, butternut, you know, things like that, acorn. So those are squash that, that you can actually harvest, pick from the vine, and they will, if kept under certain conditions and the right conditions, you can eat those squash in the winter without preserving them. So I fell in love with spaghetti squash last year. Lord, y'all, please don't do this. I planted, I planted a quarter of my garden with spaghetti squash. Here's another, another difference between summer squash and winter squash. Summer squash, zucchini, they're bushing plants. They may get two foot high, provide, you know, however much, three foot high, max. And you need to plant them about two, two and a half foot apart, okay? Spaghetti squash or a winter squash, I planted those things and some of the runners on those were 15 and 16 foot long, guys. I'm not lying. Um, they ran all over my garden, snaked all over the garden. Um, so if you got that space, that's good. Plant them. Just know that they're going to go. They're going to take off. Um, if you have rabbits or you have predators anywhere in the area that can bite through those vines, it's going to kill that whole vine. So think about that. Those little rabbits love to do that. They're not really bad in my area, but when they figure out where I'm at, like the deer always do, um, I'll have problems too. Squash love a well-draining soil, heavily composted. They love that type of material, the composting material. Full sun, they handle full sun. Now, it's different in other all the regions um, of the growing, growing area. So I'm here in East Texas, it gets mighty hot in the summer. Um, I'm talking about days on end, days and days on end, even weeks above 96, 97 sometimes. So there's about a month and a half, two, two months that are really hot. July and August are crazy hot. Um, so full sun is fine for them. But saying that, if you're in a region like this, you can get two seasons of growth from your squash. You can plant early spring and squash have about a 50 day, uh, 50 days to maturity or 45 to 50 days till they start really producing. So you could have two seasons. You could plant in early spring, okay? Come July and August, maybe give it a break in August, plant again in September, October, November, start picking. You know, you could have two seasons of those uh, of, of the squash, you know, that's summer zucchini and winter squash. As I told you before, we're, you're planting, if you're planting directly in the garden, about one inch deep, two to three foot, foot apart. Um, I tend to stay closer to two um, because I do the bushing variety more so than I do the vine variety, which is the winter squashes. Um, we talked about the two seasons. I'm not going to get big into um, pests pesticides, things of that nature. I try to stay organic with everything I do. Um, here in the South, we have a lot of squash bugs. That's really the main problem that you would have. Now with squash bugs, the easiest way to maintain them is to physically remove them, kill them. You know, when they're on the plant, you see them, get rid of them. Undersides of leaves, you see little tiny eggs, scrape them off. Those are squash bugs. Um, the other thing that you sometimes see are what's called a vine borer or a stem borer. Um, they look like a tiny wasp, um, but they will get in there, lay their larva in, inside the vines and start, because your squash vines are pretty hollow. If you've ever cut one, you'll see there's a lot of hollow space in there. And that means there's a lot of space for insects to, to grow and eat and multiply. 
Uh, aphids also can cause some, some issues. I've had to use uh, a neem oil solution, which is organic. Um, that's something I've used in the past. But again, I'm not gonna go big into that. Y'all can um, look that up, Google that. It's very easy. Uh, maybe I'll do another video, um, but I don't want this one to stretch too long. So um, when your plants start blooming, fertilize. A compost tea is something I'm gonna be using, as y'all know. I raise quail, I have a quail farm here. So I'm gonna be, be using my quail compost tea. Um, I have composted quail manure. Um, my garden was already um, fertilized ahead of time with the compost. But when you see those blooms come on, that's when you need to fertilize them, guys. Um, pour it on them, a liquid fertilize. Um, some people use a fish oil, you know, solution, uh, compost tea. Um, I've, I've heard of people using miracle Grow. I mean, whatever you got, that's the time to do some fertilizing. And don't fertilize them more than two times during their growth period. Um, but, but I would hit them once or twice during, during their growth time to get the maximum benefit out of your squash plants. Um, pollination. So, a lot of people plant their garden and forget it. They'll weed it, fertilize it, whatever, but they don't think about pollination. So, have you ever had those squash that um, get about that long and they shrivel up, rot, die off? Probably because it wasn't pollinated. If you're in an area that has a lot of bees, butterflies, you know, wasps, flying things that, that are going to get in those, those blooms and pollinate, that's great. That's good. And a lot of us think we do have those things. But would it hurt if we went ahead and made sure that all of our female blooms were pollinated? I'm going to tell you how to tell the difference. So, on your squash plants, you have those beautiful yellow blooms, which, by the way, are edible and a delicacy in some regards. People will pick those blooms. They'll fill them with a type of cheese, a ricotta or a goat cheese. They'll batter them. They'll fry them. I've never had them. They say they're great. So, back to where I was going because, you know, I love food, so I'm going to talk about it every chance I get. Pollination. Your female blooms, you have female and male blooms, your female blooms are going to have a stigma, a lobed middle. And the bloom is going to be attached to a small fruit. That's your female bloom. Your male bloom is going to have a straight pollinated stamen, is what it's called. And it's not going to have a baby fruit on the backside. That's how you tell the difference. Now, if you want to self-pollinate that, there's several different ways. I have found the easiest method to be, you ladies, um, your wives, your girlfriends, go to the dollar store, whatever you need to do. Get you one of those makeup brushes, the real soft brushes. Some people use paint brushes. I've heard of people using the um, um, battery powered toothbrush to resemble a bee in activity. You get the pollen from the male and you put it in the female bloom. Good to go. You're going to have fruit. Now, that being said, have you ever went out and get a squash, your yellow squash, and it looked like a yellow squash and a half zucchini? That's because a male zucchini pollinated to your female yellow squash. Happens every year. Happens all the time. I had spaghetti squash last year, which is the first year. They're supposed to be this pale uh, cream color to yellow squash. By the end of the season, I had spaghetti squash colored like zucchini. They still tasted good. They're still great. And I still have some put up. But cross-pollination is going to happen in every garden. That's how we've come up with all these varieties and species. However, you cross-pollinate. Don't keep those seeds for next year because they're not going to breed true. They're not going to they're not going to come up right. They're just not going to be what you're looking for. But understand that cross-pollination happens. Now that you know how poll pollinization occurs, 
you have better understanding of it, okay? So, we're going to end this video. It's already went longer than I thought it would. I know I can't keep y'all's attention, you know, for long periods of time. Um, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, I know. But I got to get to work. So, please like, subscribe, and share our videos. We appreciate your support. We thank you. God bless. Have a wonderful week.